What's up, people? So I was asked by you guys to come up with five of the most difficult maneuvers in Tekken 7, and we're about to go and get into it. Let's go. So starting off is definitely going to be Lee's Acid Rain. It is a 10 frame Punisher with two just frames in it. So after this one three here, the next two threes have to be just frame, which means they have to be inputted perfectly. Like I'm trying to mash it, it's not gonna come out. So it's impossible to come out if you're mashing. You have to time it correctly, just like that. So it's difficult, pretty difficult, especially when you're trying to use it as a punish. So let me show you. I'm trying to have King just do outstanding one plus two. Yeah, I just dropped it. Second try. Third try. Yeah, the blazing kick follow-up is super difficult also. So that's like doing basically three difficult things in a row. The two just frames and then a blazing kick follow-up for 47 damage, which is huge for 10 frames coming from a jab. So that's super, super high damage. That's a lot of life loss just for doing something that's minus 10. You know, because look at the, the alternative here. Negative one on hit, one, two, four. 26 is not bad damage, but you pretty much lose your turn. Because negative one, you can't do a jab before they do their jab. And two, one is a decent, it's a decent punish, but you see just 18 damage for 10 frames. Yeah, acid rain is just way, way better. But of course it, it's not without its difficulty. It's definitely one of the most difficult maneuvers in all of Tekken 7. So next up, I feel this maneuver definitely deserves to be on the list. That is going to be King's Burning Knuckle combo on smaller characters, like the female characters, uh, small male characters like Leroy, um, Noctis. Yeah, you know. But yeah, being able to do down forward 2-1 and pick up with these kicks, as you can see, like, It'll never connect this way. The only time it can connect this way is if you're like on their side or something. And even then it's still very inconsistent. Yeah, I'm trying to show you guys that it's actually possible, but it's super, super difficult. Yeah, yeah, there it is. So that's very rare that that'll ever, ever happen in a real match, but if you're talking about just from a regular counter hit on a front facing opponent, getting those kicks is super, super difficult. You have to do a micro dash into down forward 4-3, just like that. And it doesn't even stop there though, guys. It doesn't even stop there. You have to do a delayed second hit for the tail spin. So you just can't rapid fire it or it's going to miss. Yeah, you'll never be able to land it if you just rapid fire. So essentially you have to do a super, super perfect micro dash down forward four three. Then you have to delay the second hit of down forward two one perfectly. Not only that, after the tail spin, you have to do a micro side step right and then do the burning knuckle for this entire combo to work out perfectly. So yeah, you have no, no room for error here. So let me show you what it looks like. Yeah, that was a perfect burning knuckle combo. And it is very, very difficult. That is why you don't usually see a lot of King players even go for it because it's real, real difficult. It's super, super, super high execution. You usually would just see either like the alley kicks or um, people's elbow. Decent damage, but if you want real, real payoff, you have to master the Burning Knuckle with King. Unfortunately, it's not in Tekken 8, but um, in Tekken 7, is it was a godsend. It really helped me out a lot, as you guys saw against Qdons um, at EVO 2018. I definitely used it a lot against him, and it, it still didn't help me win. <laughs> yeah, it definitely, definitely was better to have it than not to have it. So it's, it's one of those um, combos that's really up there in difficulty. So let me show you why um, you have to have them set to like 
lay there and then back row and if you don't do it perfectly like that micro side step right then you won't even be able to hit them yeah you see they can just back roll out of it so let me show you you just do the, the side step right works like a charm so yeah it's definitely one of the most difficult maneuvers in all of Tekken 7 this definitely deserves to be on the list and if you're a king player this is something that i'm sure you struggle with but if you've mastered it then yo you're an execution master that and um yeah i wanted to mention the four four one combos but we're not even going to get into that it's difficult but i don't think it deserves to be on the list of like most difficult in all of tekken but let me know what you guys think in the comments next up i want to talk about akuma and his difficulty just doing combos which requires FADC so of course he can do stuff like this with you know small small damage we try and get y'all yeah, three hits 35 not too bad from an unsealable low but if he really wants to get a lot of damage then you have to master doing the FADC so that's the focus attack dash cancel that's what it's called it's a Street Fighter 4 maneuver a lot of people that play Street Fighter 4 knows exactly what that is every character could do it but here in Tekken, Akuma, he's able to do it from so many things and get huge payoff for it. So if he's doing like a down three or like a down two, standing two, he can actually cancel those into fireballs and FADC. So that there, super difficult to do like conversions from. So the actual act of doing it, you're just hitting one plus two, which is his power crush aka his focus attack and you just dash cancel it by tapping forward two times so let's see what it looks like in a combo see i dropped it it's difficult let's try again dropped it again yeah so this is the payoff 87 damage of course that was not the most optimal thing but um still he can get half life it's definitely a difference maker like when you're learning akuma in this game you have to optimize you have to be able to do that to even like get any kind of good combo damage with him so that's one of the most difficult things in tekken i'm sure a lot of people just um probably disagree a lot of you guys in the comments are probably going to say well akuma is not that difficult because we see you know, Atif is doing it, uh, Super Akuma, Wise Honey, so many others, but make no mistake about it. If you guys actually, like, try to do this stuff yourselves in practice mode, you will see it's not easy. And imagine, like, having to do that with pressure in a tournament of any kind. I don't care if it's an online tournament. It's it's going to be difficult. Akuma, in yeah, Akuma himself, he's, he's a pretty difficult character because of that one mechanic being able to um, cancel and convert from FADC. I think that's um, one of the top most difficult things about this game. And it's crazy because Akuma, he's, you know, he's the character in the story mode, but he's so difficult to play. Kind of like Mishima's, but um, this FADC stuff is um, crazy, crazy difficult. So let me go ahead and show you guys like what he can do in rage mode. Yeah, because like doing this here, this is a very, very difficult combo to convert from. You have even fewer frames than like a regular Hadouken. So, super difficult. Yeah, yeah, I struggle to do that. You don't even see Super Akuma do that combo much because it's so difficult. But let's go ahead and look at like a rage mode combo. This is a combo, of course, I recorded and i dropped it like a million times before i finally got it right and this is just to show what can happen if you like jump over a brine low or any low or whatever even some mids As you can see, huge, huge damage, huge payoff, but 
ridiculous execution whether you guys see steve fox so you already know where this is going it's definitely going to be his zero combo that's making it next on the list super difficult and you see like down forward two this is really all that you get if you don't do that you can do down forward two into four forward two you can even do down forward two and then full crouch down forward two but you see the damage is not really that good so what you have to do is ducking and cancel it into the machine guns so this is one ducking right the regular cancel then you have to do a second one into the machine gun or the gatling whatever it's called but where it gets difficult is after that you have to do a flicker stance into wild rising one yeah lots of damage especially if there's a wall involved thing is it's just so difficult to do that instant while standing even like the first part doing the second ducking into the gatling after the first ducking cancel super difficult so um yeah that's just one of the things about playing steve in general is that he's so difficult like doing the, the ducking into the cancel and being able to block making the move safe all that stuff difficult instant while standing one difficult so um yeah the shiro combo you can see people like me see people like loha hero malik they're like almost never dropping it they they land the move almost every time almost every time they land that combo but if you're like new and you're trying to do that stuff with steve is um <laughs> it's going to be difficult but uh unfortunately they took that away in tekken 8 I don't know why that was a high execution thing that really separated, you know, the, the master Steve players from the beginners and even intermediates. Because you don't see every Steve player go for that Shiro combo, even still, you know, the game's been out forever now. Season four has been out forever. But um, yeah, it's just such a difficult maneuver. It definitely deserves to be on the list. What do you guys think? You guys think the Shiro combo doesn't deserve to be on the list? Is it something more difficult that I might be leaving out? Let me know. So next up is actually one of the most difficult maneuvers in all of Tekken history. So the punt jet upper for Brian, you input the one, three, and four all together to get the taunt. But what you have to do, you know, is be close enough to where the knee actually hits and you have to cancel that hit animation with a jet upper to make it combo see if you do it too slow it won't combo and the opponent can duck under it and punish you hard so doing the ton jet upper requires immense training immense execution execution that i do not have <laughs> but let's go ahead and try and see man that took a lot of tries a lot of tries <laughs> my goodness jeez yeah this controller went out on me so that's that's my excuse that's my excuse definitely top two arguably top one no no telling but um you guys it's, it's up to you guys to really like leave your list um let me know what you guys think in the comments but next up is quite possibly the most difficult maneuver in all of Tekken history. And that's definitely the Perfect Electric Wind Godfist, AKA Perfect Electric. This is something that only Kazuya can do out of all the Mishimas uh, because he can actually do his from this forward neutral right here. The um, little misstep or whatever it's called. All he has to do after that is just down plus forward. So he doesn't have to actually do the down into the down plus forward to like initiate a crouch dash. So he doesn't have to do that. The other machine must do. So that slows it down by a frame, which allows Kazuya to do stuff like a uh, counter hit down forward two into electric for the full lunch. This move here, back one plus two on counter hit into the full lunch. And he can even punish hop kicks that are exactly negative 13. He can do that with perfect electric wing office. So let me try and do it from all three. Let's see, how many tries does it take? Man, 
messed the combo up. I messed it up. Yeah, he just deletes your health bar. But anyways, being able to do a punish. So let me see if I can do that. I'm going to record Miguel to do a hop kick and try to block. And I'm going to attempt the perfect electric and get the punish. Bro, I suck. Yeah, you see, it's unbelievably difficult. I want to get the full combo, too. Okay, yeah, he gets immense damage. It's, like, it's just like a regular electric hitting, but um, getting it from a 13 frame punish. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Getting it from a hop kick. Yeah, that is that is insane. But that's something that you really don't ever see because of its difficulty. Most uh, Kazuyas will just settle for um, like back one, two. Yeah, two, two is pretty good. Or, you know, one, one, two. All of that is, is good as a substitute because they give good damage and they knock down mostly. But if you're able to do a um, perfect electric, then you're just on something. Because <laughs> you see how hard it is for me to do. I can't even do it consistently, and I know the attack is coming. So imagine being in an actual match trying to do this, like right on the fly. Super, super, super difficult. Near impossible. Because, like, counter hit down forward two, you can plan for that. You can't plan for when someone's going to do a hop kick. Or let's say if it's a different move that's not a hop kick, that's a uh, negative 13. Heck, even if it's negative 14, that's, like, with the other machinimas, that stuff is difficult. Like a jack down forward two, you block that and do electric, then, yeah, that is... Um, insanely difficult that is insanely difficult q Dons did that against saint in the uh, first Tekken war tour finals he actually blocked the down forward two and electric punished it with devil gen that was insane but uh like with kazuya yeah you don't really see hop kicks get launched with kazuya because it's just too difficult it is just way too difficult it's um the most difficult maneuver in the game Cause like I said, like with combos, stuff like Ton Jet Upper, you can plan for that at least. It's still gonna be insanely difficult, but you know, you know, there's one timing for it. And um, it's easier to like see, it's easier to telegraph. Cause you know, you got the whole ton animation and all you have to do is just execute it. But you don't know when a punishable move is coming your way. It might even be negative 12. So yeah, doing that, with so many moves for each character, like right on the fly in the match, super hard to do. It's super hard to do. So uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, are there any other, like more difficult things that I didn't list? More difficult maneuvers? I wanna give some honorable mentions to like uh, the Leo Instant Wild Rising uh, 3 from like Up 4 2 1. That definitely is difficult too. And um, Law, the DSS stance like in combos or like in strings, block strings and stuff. That's super difficult too, especially the counter hit while standing four into the three plus four. Yeah, that's that's real difficult. I don't I don't especially have uh, much difficulty doing it, but uh, I can definitely see like law players not using it as much. I've, I've seen them all do it before, but um, it's not a super consistent thing. Let me see if I can get this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there it is. That's the drop. Yeah, yeah. All that stuff pretty difficult, but um, I don't think it deserved to be on the list, but it in you guys' opinions, it might it might does deserve to be on the list, but yeah, let me know in the comments, guys. Hit the like button on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. 
I'll definitely be pumping out some more videos. We definitely got more Tekken 8 stuff next week. Definitely got some information on the horizon. I'm really excited for that. I hope you guys are too. And I'm going to be covering a lot of it too, as much as I can. I'll see you guys at the next video. You have a great one. Peace.